Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about wide angle photography, specifically for the wildlife photographer, maybe the bird photographer. This is gonna be a great video. You might even learn a little something, and I've got some really fantastic images to show you, so stay tuned. We'll get to it right after this. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about wide angle photography. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Sometimes I get a little excited to make videos. Um, most importantly, I just wanna present the information so that you, you learn a little something, you see some great images in the process. As always, I try to show you real life examples. I think you're gonna love this video. I need you to stay tuned because I've got a lot of information. I'm gonna to try to break it down, very easy to digest. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some real world examples with different subjects, including some wildlife and some birds. But I wanna get to it by talking about the lenses themselves. Now, before we can talk about wide angle photography, we actually have to understand focal length and what it means and how it relates to the angle of view. So these are a couple terms you'll hear a lot in this video. You'll hear me refer to angle of view and you'll hear me refer to focal length. Now, I've brought some lenses out for this. I'm gonna show you just a telephoto lens, but this is a 200 millimeter maximum lens, 100 millimeter and a 50 millimeter lens. I'll talk about this lens in just a minute. So uh, in general, what people think is that a 200 millimeter focal length is the length of the lens or some variation of the length of the lens. So maybe it's halfway between the lens and the back of the lens, or maybe it has to do with the diameter. Uh, let me just quickly explain what focal length means. It is slightly related to the length or the size of the lens, but not specifically. It does not necessarily mean that focal length is determined by the size of the lens. That's generally the case. So a 600 millimeter lens will be bigger than a 100 millimeter lens in most cases the length will almost always be longer. But that's not what focal length means. Here's how focal length is really determined. Focal length is determined by the area that light converges in the lens. And there's the middle of the lens, physically the middle of this lens might be right here. That doesn't mean that's where the light converges. So the optical center of this lens might be somewhere back in here. It could actually be in the front of that as well. The distance from that optical center, that area where light converges to one point in the lens, the distance from that point to the sensor determines focal length. So again, it's slightly related to size. Generally speaking, larger lenses will have larger focal lengths, but not always the case. Let me show you this. This is a 100 millimeter lens. We would expect a 50 millimeter lens to be half the length, but this is a 50 millimeter lens and it's very small in relation. It's less than half the size. Let me show you a better example. This is a 50 millimeter lens. And if I showed you this lens, one would expect that the larger lens is the larger focal length. In this case, it is not what happens. This 50 millimeter lens is much smaller than this lens, which only extends to 35 millimeters. Now, why, could, why is that? Like, why would a, a larger lens have a shorter focal length? And that's because the point of convergence, that, that area also known by the way as the nodal point. I'm not going to talk about nodal point in this video if you're a landscape photographer, especially if you do panoramic videos, those, those, video, those images where you stitch things together, you're going to want to watch some videos on that. But the, the area of convergence on this lens is much further back, which means the focal length is actually very, very small. Now, I hope that makes sense. If you have more questions about focal length, feel free to Google it for yourself. It's pretty easy to find that information, but I think this illustration should help you out in just understanding how focal length is determined. And once we understand focal length, we can start talking about the angle of view. Now the angle of view is the angle at which you can see through the lens. So if I'm looking through the camera, what's the angle that I can see out of that? Or what's the angle captured by the lens? Longer lenses, longer focal lengths will have narrower fields of view or angles of view. So I'm going to pull up a quick illustration to show you a couple of common sizes with these. So when we look at this illustration, you'll see a couple things. You're going to see the millimeters represented in the focal length of the lens, and then you're going to see the angles of view or the field of view. Now I want you to notice what we typically use for wildlife lenses. We typically use 400 millimeter to 600 millimeter. Not always, but typical. Especially for bird photographers, those are very common guidelines. And in that, we only have very narrow fields of view. So this area that we can see is only about four to six degrees from the lens of the camera. A couple things about that. It can make it very hard to see the image, meaning we have to search because we, we don't have much to look at. 
and it will also create some other things that I'll show you later, things, things like compression. Now let's just clean up some of this and I'll show you some of the key focal lengths and why I've decided to show you these. The 50 millimeter focal length, that 45 degree field of view, that's about what the human eye can see. Now if you, if you were to Google this or research this, it would give you a couple different focal lengths. I'm going to just say 50 degrees. When we use standard lenses, this would be called kind of a standard focal length or a normal focal length. This represents roughly what the human eye sees. And it will, it will range from about 40 degrees up to about 85 degrees. It's going to be in that range. That's the range of what we would consider a normal focal length. As we get bigger, as we increase our magnification and our field of view starts to shrink, we would call those telephoto lenses. For most wildlife photographers, when we're talking about 400 and 600 millimeter lenses, we might even call those ultra telephoto lenses. But as we get wider in our field of view, and as our focal lengths decrease, we're going to consider that wide angle photography. And that's what we're going to talk about today. For the purposes of this video, I've classified it as anything under 50 millimeters. A lot of people might tell you it's anything under 35. I'm going to use a little bit of leniency with this and say anything under 50 millimeters for the purposes of this video, I'm going to consider wide angle photography. So I've shown you some of these illustrations, but now I really want to show you some real life examples. I'm going to pull up on the side here a typical bird photo taken at 560 millimeters. This is my 400 millimeter lens with its teleconverter on. At 10 feet away, this is the size of the image that you will get. It's also the field of view, because remember, we're talking a lot about the, the angle of view or the field of view in this. A very narrow field of view. If I compare that and I jump all the way down to 50 millimeters, let's take a look at what that physically looks like without the illustrations or the graphics, but what does it really look like through the camera? Notice this much wider field of view. I also want you to notice the size of the subject. Now, lenses work in a linear fashion, so it's just as you would expect. A 500 millimeter lens will magnify 10 times greater than a 50 millimeter lens, which means this subject should be 10 times smaller than it was at 550 millimeters. I'll talk a little bit about size in a minute. Don't get hung up on that. There's a few of you who may be saying, well, that's not quite right. I'll get to that in a minute, but just bear with the thought process right now. It's going to be about 10 times smaller. Let's go down to 22 millimeters, much, much wider field of view. Now I'm out around 90 degree field of view and the size of the subject is about half what it was at 50 millimeters. Now I'm going to put these two up next to each other and I'm just going to show you that 50 millimeter versus the 22 millimeter. And I want to talk about size real quick because I mentioned that size is a linear change when you deal with these lenses. So if you double the magnification, you double the size of the image or the subject. Let me show you real quickly what I did in my basement to illustrate this. I took a picture of a square sign. Now, a couple things that are very interesting that work very well for this video is the ratio of my camera is three by two. We'll consider this, I'm just gonna say units, not a, a specific measurement, but three by two. I'll put a graph over here and you'll see what I mean. If this was three blocks, wide by two blocks tall. The ratio here is three to two. I want you to notice this square occupies two blocks across and two blocks up and down. The area of that, the size of that would be four units, four blocks. Makes sense, right? This is taken at 200 millimeters. Now, if I take out my 200 millimeter lens, if I take that off and I put on a 100 millimeter lens, the size of this should be half. Let's take a look at that. This is what it looks like at 100 millimeters. It's one unit by one unit. It's half as tall, but it's also half as wide. And when we talk about the size of the subject or the area, it's actually only one unit. It's not quite half the size. So when, when I use that phrase, and I may accidentally say it again in here, and I'll say it's half the size, what I really mean to say is it's half the height plus half the width. And in this case, it's gonna be 75% smaller. It works out really well in this little graph because you can see it here on the right. It occupies a two by two grid for four units of space. On the left, it occupies a one by one grid for one unit of space. That's how size works with telephoto lenses or with any lens in, in particular. But the 200 millimeter lens will have twice the magnifying power, but the subject will actually be only 25% as big, 
when you use that 100 millimeter focal length. Now, I hope that made sense because I tried to make it as easy to understand as possible. Hopefully, these illustrations help. And while it's fun to play around with illustrations and graphs and sizes and numbers, what's the best thing for me is to show you how it works in the field. And for that, I have enlisted the help of some friends. Now, for this, I reached out to some of my subscribers over on Patreon and asked them to submit some wide-angle images of wildlife. I also reached out on Instagram. So I've got some of my Instagram friends and followers out there and they've submitted some wide angle images. And I'm gonna review these and kind of show you some of the different techniques and some of the different subjects that you can use with wide angle and some of the applications. What does it actually look like? Let's start with this bison. So this is by uh, Pav Selvam. And one of the things I really liked about this image, taking it 50 millimeters, is that you get a really nice size of the subject. You get some nice detail, it looks fuller in the frame. And because of that wider angle, that field of view, you get some of the background as well. So here you see the mountains also in really nice proportion to the bison. You know, we think of wide angle often with these large animals. And in this case, we've got an elephant by my friend Vince Maidens. Now, I would love to rip this image apart and critique Vince publicly. However, I have to admit, this one's pretty good. Uh, a lot of technical things about this that I really, really like. The conversion to black and white makes sense with a lot of textures on the elephant, the clouds, the dark clouds, also really, really great for a black and white image. But let's just look at the focal length. You're taking it 14 millimeters at just a few feet away. That's how close you have to be when you get down to these really, really small focal lengths. The very wide field of view allows for that whole background to show off. I thought this was an exceptional image. Again, I'll put some of the settings up so that you could see it, but um, really, really great illustration of working with some of these larger game, these megafauna images uh, with these shorter focal lengths and wider fields of view. Now this, this next image, um, I thought really illustrated a little bit smaller in frame, but how you get that whole scenic environment. So in the first two images, the animal was fairly larger, large in the frame. In this one, it's a little smaller in the frame and both work very, very well. I almost think of these as landscape type photos with animals inserted. This one by Adam Johannick. So really, really well done. Now, wide angle isn't just limited to large game. You're gonna see as we move, move through this progression, we are going to get smaller and smaller in our subjects. And we're gonna show you how it can be used with a couple of reptiles. Uh, in this one, we've got a tortoise taken by my friend, Matt Sullivan. Now, Matt really struggles to track animals. So uh, a, a, a turtle or a tortoise is about the right speed for him. Uh, this one taken at 24 millimeters. One of the things I really liked about this is we see some of the environment and the habitat in the background, but it gives us a sense that this, this is larger than life. This happens, by the way, as we get smaller focal lengths, there's an effect called distortion. And distortion, think of it as like rounding a photo out. If you've ever seen a fisheye image, it's the extreme example of this where everything is distorted. The thing that is close to you gets really, really big, really fast but as it gets just slightly away from you, it gets really, really small really fast. So that, uh, that idea of distortion can be used to play around with size and scale and shape. And in this case, I think it does a really, really nice job with this tortoise. Um, pretty good image by my friend, Matt Sullivan. This next one is by Nikki Nobles. This one, uh, pay attention to the settings over there. This one taken at 15 millimeters, not the largest subject by any means. This small frog, she said was just inches, maybe even less away from the lens. But you can see that it doesn't appear to be huge in the frame. So as we get really, really small in here, we've got a very wide angle that we're shooting. That field of view becomes very wide, but the subjects can remain very, very small relative to how close we are. Again, 15 millimeters, we're just inches away from that frog. So these reptiles can be good subjects when they're not moving and when they're stationary, it allows you to play with composition and it allows you to get pretty close in those, those times when you need to get close. So I thought that was really, really good. Now that's part one of this two part series on wide angle photography. Make sure you check out part two. I'm gonna show you some more bird images. You're really, really gonna love that one. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that bell for notifications so you know when that next video comes out.